Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. In a world where everyone says hello, they dare to say, Yeah, yeah good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yes. Good day. Yeah. Good day. Good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, yeah, good day. Yeah, good day, Tim. Yeah, good day, Leon. Yeah, good day, everyone. Yeah, good day, everyone. Welcome to Yeah, good day, the complete guide to Australia and the surrounding suburbs. Yeah. We ticked the, the surrounding suburbs box when we search for Australia. Yeah, and usually it comes up with, you know, there's uh, the New Zealand suburb, yeah. there's the Papua New Guinea suburb. This is a very specific joke. <laughs> like, you have to specifically have tried renting and using a, re- <laughs> <Yeah>. a rental <laughs> website to <laughs> understand this joke. I hope that it carries. This is obviously, this is like a Jerry Seinfeld. What's the deal with <laughs> yeah. home.com.au? Yeah. yeah. Why are the surrounding suburbs always so far away? <laughs> yeah. What's the surrounding Legitimate suburb? question though. Why? <laughs> yeah. They're surrounding always... suburb of Melbourne. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sydney? Yeah. Have you tried Sydney? Why are you Sydney? showing me fucking apartments <laughs> Have you tried in, Perth? Uh, Brisbane. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Anyway, yeah. No, that was um, that was a good start. Um, welcome to, obviously, our new fans. Which we're picking up every week. Um, if you don't know what we're doing here, um, try harder to read. Yeah, because it's all up on the internet. Reading is important when it comes to listening to podcasts. I so. find it's the best way to absorb a podcast is to read the sound waves, mm-hmm. and you can usually work it out. Split your attention. It's possible. It is. Tim, um, obviously, as we talked about last week, big week. Mick Oz was back. Um, Thank God. Can confirm. Good friend Simon Blackman has had. Yeah. Mick Oz. He has. A Mick Oz. Yep. Um, and, and Beetroot does seem to be the kicker. It does. That yeah. kicked off a massive discussion in about the, yeah, in burgers the group, in the group. Um, we've, ha- we've had some a fan in America who has never had a Tim Tam before and thought she couldn't find them. Find the Tim Tams at a local supermarket in the yeah. international section. A lot's happened in the last week, actually. Now you're recounting and I'm starting to think about it in my mind. It's been a busy week. It's been a busy week. Um, People came to the um, forefront with the egg on the burger thing. People agree with oh, that. Oh, the egg on burger conversation. I don't think anyone has ever disagreed with that, surely. Unless they're vegan. That you shouldn't have one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then we had the discussion about chocolate in the fridge. It was a big one. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And obviously at the end of this episode, I am saving it. I will inform everyone about the, the saga of who do you think you are, Vegemite edition. Yeah. Um, there's a bit more to update on you. But a lot has happened. Yes, yeah. Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about something that happened... In history, in yeah. culture, and specifically, Tim, in Australia. Correct. It did happen. Uh, well, here and other places. Uh, <laughs> Surrounding suburbs. She happened. It's it's a she. She happened. Um, yeah. No, we're talking about Fanny Durack. Fanny Durack. Someone that I am very unfamiliar with. Yeah, I can't say I know a great deal about Fanny. Well, now I do. Well, you do now. Um, yeah. And uh, to to clear everything up, uh, in America, a fanny means bum. Uh, in Australia, in Australia, it means a uterus. Oh, it's specifically, specifically uterus? the uterus. I was just going to say, that. no, it means a vagina. The, the vagina, yeah. Oh, I said a dirty word. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get an R rating. No, Fuck, we just no. lost out. Uh, we'll get an R, R rating audience. if the patriarchy <clears throat> will, you know, not calm down. Bloody yeah. stupid. That word, Why it can't makes I say them vagina? so angry. Blocking nipples, blocking vaginas. Well, say it again. Vagina. No, uh, so no no, no, bum and, and vagina jokes. But neither of us laughed just then. That's pretty good. Yeah, I know. Fanny is, uh, around this time period when Fanny lived, it was quite a common name. But that's not her, her yeah. name name. No, her full name is Sarah Frances Durack. Yeah, uh, so Fanny, Fanny is short. short for Sarah. Yes, obviously. <laughs> yeah, but I think we've talked about this possibly even last week. Back in this time period, she was she lived from um, eighteen eighty nine to nineteen fifty six. Okay, so she was born in the late nineteenth um, century. Yes, nineteenth yes. century. Um, people had nicknames that don't make sense to us now. 
No. They're always, there's always like... I think I had this discussion at work, actually. There's always like... It's just... It's so different. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always... The, and middle names are the big thing because usually the first name... Or I don't know. I don't think Sarah's one, but you, the first name for a lot of people was like the the kind of Catholic y saint name or something. Yeah. Like as we talked about before, my nana is uh, Ursula Gertrude, mm. and she goes by Gert for some good reason, I would say, because yeah. Ursula's a hard one. Um, my pop is William John Keith Green, but he goes by Keith. Oh, he's gone for the third. Yeah, which is, I mean, Keith isn't really like a nickname; it's no. an actual name. Yeah, but he goes by Keith. Yeah. But that, like, imagine if you and I went by, um, imagine if I went by Keith mm. and you went by Daryl. That'd be very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Some people do it on Facebook, though. Anyway, we're getting anyway, off Sorry. Top. Yeah, we're, we're getting off topic. Fanny, my, oh, quickly. My, I did oh, want to... Yeah, go- please tell me. Sandy. This is... Some, someone told me this at work. Yeah. Is, like, sometimes used short for Alexandra. What? Yeah, no. That is my exact reaction. I was like, no, that's... that's it's not, look at me, I'm Alexandra D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It could be. <laughs> Maybe it was. It or it kind of fits in phrase-wise, but it's just enough. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, it's as if Tim Minchin wrote Greece. Yeah. Try to fit it. Um, anyway. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Fanny, Fanny Durak. Yes. Uh, but mar- known mostly by her married name, Fanny Gately. 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 Um, yes, she was... Gately, um, <laughs> she was a, she was a swimmer. She was a competition swimmer. Yeah. She was um, from 1910 till 1918. She was considered the world's best uh, female swimmer in all distances, which is literally all distances and all styles, or just all uh, distances? specifically in freestyle. But I know yeah. she did. Um, we'll talk about it. But I know she did other stuff other as well, styles. of course. Oh, let's talk about it. Let's get into her past. We've trod the we've trod the tracks where Fanny has trod. In fact, I've Have swum we? where she started. She learned to swim in Sydney's Coogee Baths. I don't think I've um, swam there, but I've I been have, there. I have uh, drunk actually. Not a good idea. Don't much like drunk, Fanny, no. Kidding. But I w- was drunk when I swam there um, using breaststroke. Um, so at the time when she started swimming, um, breaststroke was the only championship. Swimming stroke that women were allowed to compete in. Is that why it's called breaststroke? Maybe. We should Wait, just yeah. let me just. Uh, yeah. No, I can't confirm that wasn't a computer. No, it's me. definitely probably not. Um, that's um, interesting. I didn't know that there was a, 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 a lockdown on what the women could compete in in, in swimming. Yes. No. Um, women like Fanny was. have really fought to to open the pool up. You know, yeah. Uh, 1906, she won her first title. Over the next few years, dominated um, in the swimming scene. 1910, 11 swimming season, um, she was beat, but she became friends with this woman. Apparently, this is important to her life story. Yeah, Mina Wiley. Oh, she okay. meet her. Yeah, Mina. So, wait, how, how old is Fanny in 1906? 1906. When was she born? 15. And no. you say 1889? 89. So she's like 27? And she wins her first championship. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. So this... But yeah, she, then she was beat by Mina. But this was like the Australian Swimming Championships at Rose Bay. Right. Uh, very nice part of the world. Yeah, yes. nice. But no, they were, good, they were good friends. Um, 1912 to 1920, she held women's freestyle swimming uh, world record for 100 metres. Wow. She also held the 200 meter freestyle record from 1915 to 1921. That's a big stint. Yeah, she other world records she held um, included the 220 yards freestyle, um, which was 1915 to 1921. I don't know how far yards is. I don't know well, what the conversion is. I think it's based on the size of a backyard. So ah. um, it's quite a big distance. She swam really. through 220. <laughs> yeah, backyards. backyards. Interesting. Of varying sizes. Yeah. Um, she held the 500 meter freestyle record from 1916 to 1917, and one mile freestyle 1914 to 1926. She held that That's one huge. a long time. And she also had a lot of Australian and state records. Um, so the New South Wales Ladies Swimming Association. I can't speak today. Apparently, no. It usually makes for a good that, podcast. That, 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 um, was. The, this is the Ladies Swimming Association, right? They were opposed to women participating in the Olympic Games. The, That's confusing. The Women's Swimming Association didn't want women to... It was a wild time. It's like on Parks and Rec, the women against feminists or whatever it is. Yeah, it's it was a wild time. Confusing. Um, 
1912 Summer Olympics in Stockholm uh, was the first Olympics that had women swimming. Um, both Durak and Wiley. There she is again. Ooh, a friend. Ooh, Mina. She, she came back up, which is why she was mentioned earlier, I presume. Is Mina Wiley or Whiteley? Wiley. W-Y-L-I-E. You said Whiteley before. Nah, mate. Nah, 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 nah. Anyway, so they're over there, 1912, in Stockholm. Uh, well, no. Initially, they were refused permission oh. um, by the... This is a crazy... A, NSWLSA. Wow, that sounds like... It's just easier to call them the New South Wales Ladies Swimming Association. Right. It's it's too much. So they denied them to go. Um, so they, yeah, they wouldn't let them compete. Um, but later they were allowed to go provided they bore, they bore their own expenses. So they had to pay for themselves. Oh, brutal. That was the one thing that ended up letting them go. That would have cost um, them tens of dollars. Yeah. Which was a lot back then, actually. It was. <laughs> yeah. um, so they organized like a fundraising um, and... They had to take chaperones, so they actually had to raise funds for themselves. Plus. And then their obligatory chaperones. Jesus. So they had to raise money for at least four people. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of bunning sausages, probably let me tell pounds. you. Probably pounds. Yeah. No, you'd make that money very easily with bunning sausages. Oh, actually. Yeah. I wonder if they thought about that. Probably um, not because bunning wasn't around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so at that games, Jurek, uh set a new world record. Yes. Um, for the 100 meter freestyle, she won the final, becoming the first Australian woman to win an Olympic gold medal in a swimming event. That's, so that's amazing. Good. Yeah. Um, until the 1932 Olympics, she was the only um, woman. What? I've this, I've written this weirdly. I don't know what I'm saying here. <laughs> what do you want me to do with this? Um. <laughs> What? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. No, I get you. I get you. It means until 1932, she was the only woman who had won a gold medal. Um, but at that time, Claire Dennis won a, um, another gold medal for Australia in the 200 meter breaststroke. Right. The only woman to win in a Los gold Angeles. medal in swimming? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, again, a huge stint of like 20 years or something. Yeah. But then, and then it, until 1956, her and Claire Dennis were the only two women to have won a gold medal like, still. Right That's up until 1956. Huge achievement. Yeah, it's enormous. Um, enormous, enormous, enormous. Um, she didn't... Oh, sorry. Before the 1920 Antwerp Olympics, mm. the week before, uh, she got appendicitis. Oh, no. She had an emergency appendectomy. As you would. Yes, yes, sir. Um, and then she got typhoid fever and pneumonia, um, so she wasn't able to compete. Devo. Yeah, that'll that'll get you. You thought that was going to go like, oh no, she fought back, didn't yeah, you? No, she, she got sicker and, and she no, couldn't yeah, go. She got so, much, it got much worse. We like to lay out the reality of yeah, things here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's good. That's kind of her situation. She set a lot of records. She went to the Olympics. She didn't go to one because she was sick. Yeah, she had typhoid. Um, yeah, she died in Sydney in 1956. So how old was she? Uh, sixty something. Uh, sixty six. There you go. Look at that maths I quickly did in my brain. 66. Um, so she was buried at Waverley Cemetery, where I've been also, um, with swimming her husband. There. Sorry? You went swimming at Waverley Cemetery? I did, yes. Yeah. Sometimes they leave the <laughs> the graves open and just let them fill up with water in the rain and you just jump in there. It's kind of nice. Good experience. Yeah. Um, um, met, so they were the husband? Yeah. Bernard Martin Gately was his name. Um, oh. There's the Fanny Durack Aquatic Centre in Petersham. I have not been there, no. which is a suburb of Sydney. Um, and she was posthumously inducted into the International Swimming Hall of Fame as an honour swimmer in 1967. I don't know what an honour swimmer is. Yeah, no, but do I, I presume it's good. Is it where you swim without cheating? And you honour? Yeah, honor maybe. She, she swam with pride. Yeah. I don't know. Well, good for her. Yeah. When was her birthday? Uh, when was her death day? 20th of March. This is the thing. You mentioned that we were going to do this episode about Fanny because some she kind was the of Google thing two days ago. situation had occurred. Maybe, yeah, she was the Google thing, but maybe... I wonder why. That's yeah, because it's not anyway. near her birth date or, oh, yeah. 
it's kind of halfway between. There you go. There's a, a little bit behind the uh, the episode. Is the reason we're doing it is because yeah, it appeared we d- we talked about Fanny a while ago when we were looking at um I think when we we're looking at Dame Nellie Melba. We're, yeah, we're looking we at the picked between women. the two. Yeah. Um, and we and we saw Fanny, and then yeah, the uh, then I was on Google, and she came up again. I thought that's the that's the ticket. That's the way. But obviously, it had nothing to do with any date that we can that we can quickly work. Yeah, out. we might need to figure that out. Yeah. Um, some nice pictures of Fanny. Good. Yeah. No. Good. That's important. Good on her. Um, There's one where she has um her swimmers on, but she's got like a bunch of different badges. Oh, that sounds. This picture. That doesn't sound. I don't really know what the badges are. Also, doesn't but sound she's like got she a lot of that. them. Yeah, I feel like that's gonna sink you. Um, there you go. Any um, so shout a husband. Any other fa- family of note? It doesn't appear so, or at least I've not found record of such. Uh, Wikipedia is a finite source. Yes, it is true. And uh, yeah, no, no, good on her. Good on you, bloody good on you, Fanny. Fanny. Um, it's a it's a, it was a big deal back then, especially it's a, it's with a big deal now. The friggin' ladies association, the ladies so association, confusing. telling them they I'm couldn't so go. So confused by that situation. Yeah, why? I don't understand. Um, but her and her and Mina decided they were going to go anyway. But like holding it. records, fucking well done, and holding gold medals as the only person for like twenty years or so. That's yeah, massive. Yeah, even holding it for like five years is massive. Yeah, absolutely. And Good then her and uh, the other lass. Yeah, Claire. I can't yeah. remember her last name. Till fifty six, the only two females to have. Uh... That seems crazy because it doesn't seem very long ago. Fifty six. I yeah. know it's all like sixty years ago. Yeah, um, wow, sixty years ago. But still, it doesn't seem very long, and there weren't uh, many women gold medals in the Olympics for swimming. No, but here we are today <laughs> with great swimmers. I yeah. assume Fanny was an inspiration for people like. Dawn Fraser, Susie O'Neill. Well, I presume it was uh, our dear Dawn Fraser who probably broke that streak. Quite possibly. In 56. Quite I think. possibly. Um, and that, what's that other swimming girl's name? Stephanie Price? Is that her name? Stephanie Rice. Yeah. Rice. <laughs> Rice. The Price is Rice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, definitely uh, paving the way. I would say you just love tugging on that microphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, paving Sorry. the way for female um, Olympians, probably in general, but definitely obviously yeah. in the swimming world. We have a very strong swimming team now as well. A lot of great female swimmers have come through. You see, in the national anthem, one of the lines is "girt by sea," mm. um, but the sub, like the the footnote on that, is "there's so much water, we just do a lot of fucking swimming." Yeah. Um. So yeah, we have a pretty good swimming team because all you can do down here is swim. We do like to swim down here in Oz, mate. Yeah. yeah. Either swim or you run in the desert. Yes. Um, chasing. You know what I saw the other day? This is a side note. Um, I was watching some Australian Ninja Warrior because I had that discussion with my family and found the right time to watch it. That's a callback. Fantastic. Um, Fantastic. And uh, the guy to train um, just chased kangaroos. Oh. Which is pretty good training, I would say. Like, you'd, yeah, until you'd they turn around. Oh, I guess that's even better because then <laughs> yeah. you've got to run away from them. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then you've got to fight them. Yeah. Um, anyway, but yeah, okay. So there you go. Fanny Durak, is it? Durak, yeah, Durak. And yeah. she trained down there in Kuji Baths. Good old Kuji. Well, that's where she started anyway. Good old Kuji Baths. Yeah. Um, there you go. Tim, mm. what's that sound? I don't know. It's a Harold Holt watch. Flawless. Flawless. Absolutely flawless. I, I think it makes it more flawless that we draw attention to it every time. Yeah. I think you have to point out perfection. I'm a big oh, yeah. big proponent it's of like making how, sure people know how well you've done. It's like how people say that like jokes are only funny the ones that you explain. Yeah. Only if you explain them, they're funny. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> got a letter here for you. I'm going to read please, it right now. Please do read it. Dear Tim and Leon, my name is Lindsay and I live in Melbourne. The other day I was playing Pokemon Go near the old Q Asylum. Mm. I was focused on catching a Weedle when I accidentally bumped into someone. When I looked up from my phone, I realized it was another Pokemon Goer trying to catch the same Weedle. Mm. I was startled to find someone else playing Pokemon Go, but even more so by who it was. The man looked to be Harold Holt. We apologized to each other and I didn't realize who it was until after I caught the Weedle. By the time I looked up again, he was gone. I wonder if you got the Weedle. We'll never know. (laughs) Anyway, just thought I would keep you updated. Enjoy the Japan tour and I can't wait for the Antarctica dates to be announced. Warm regards, 
Lindsay. Mm, thank you, Lindsay. Thanks, Lindsay. That's so weird that you didn't see Lindsay and Harold Holt because didn't you tell me that you were down at the no, Kill Island plane? No, not me. Long ago, not, like never, two days ago. I would. I. I That's I, so I weird that you didn't bump I, into I, each I, other. I, I, well, it wasn't, and and there's no there's yeah. no history in that. That's so weird. That's not even. Yeah. I didn't even. Anyway, and Pokemon he has a Beedrill by you. He probably does. I've got a Beedrill. Yeah. Not that I play Pokemon Go. No. <laughs> A Q Island. No. No, I do play a lot of Pokemon Go at the moment. Um, there you go. Spotted playing Pokemon Go, which is wow. a risky move for him because that has location. True. That he could be tracked on. True, true. And I assume his username is probably like HH77 or something like that. Or, yeah, something or specific. Holt exactly Dog. Like that. Or <laughs> Please Don't Find Me or yeah. I'm Hiding. <laughs> I am not Harold Holt. <laughs> I've been running for years, yeah. 77. <laughs> Looking to trade for Beedrill. <laughs> Am not a communist, no matter what the conspiracy says. Yeah, <laughs> can't swim. Oh, is that is that rough? Oh, nah, he probably doesn't uh, have any water Pokemon. Hey, oh, or maybe he's only got water Pokemon. Yeah, maybe that's why he wanted a Beedrill. He's, maybe he's trying to learn to surf. Maybe he's trying to get a HM. Oh, get the HM surf so that he can Look finally. Look at all this. This uh, this this rich Pokemon humor that we've tapped into. Oh, we should write a TV show. It wouldn't be very good, but we Call should write it one. Mon Pokey. Um, mm. Tim. Yeah. Last week, mm-hmm. things got a bit heated. Yeah. Between everyone, really, myself yeah. and you, and the world, and then and then it turned out pretty much everyone just world. said that you're an idiot. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, some words are thrown around like um. Why are you still breathing? And you're a fucking moron. And I hate everything you're about. And yeah. you're just two guys in a basement. Like a lot of things were yeah. said. And bring my coffee from the kitchen, please. When you're yeah. coming back, <laughs> yeah. That Where's was the cheese? Um, rude. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, it was it was a rough week. But here's the thing. As soon as the episode ended, I messaged Kylie that we lived with. Yeah. Kylie was out. My was my hope. Mm. She was my. Um, uh, light at the end of the dark Vegemite tunnel that I was in. Indeed. And I said, Kylie. She said, yes, because that's her name. Mm-hmm. Uh, she said, I said, do you keep your... I said, where do you keep your Vegemite? Yeah. She said, in the cupboard. And I said, fuck. <laughs> what an enthralling story. <laughs> because I genuinely believe that Kylie was the answer. Yeah. I messaged Mim, another housemate from the time. Mm-hmm. Where do you keep your Vegemite in the cupboard? Why? Fuck. Um, yeah. So we got into this this itch issue. Yeah. Um, and now, as we know, Mum and Dad had confirmed that they didn't keep it in the the fridge either. Mum mm. messaged me about uh, something else. I think seeing if I was feeling well in myself or something like that. I reply, by the way, where does Nana keep her Vegemite? Mm. Now. This was this took some time to determine too, didn't it? This was this was all in one day. I was going for it. Um, where does Nana keep her Vegemite? Now, Mum said, in the cupboard. Mm. And then I replied, and said the cupboard is where Nana keeps tinned food and jelly. Right. Which Mum replied to that jelly is kept in the fridge. Yeah. I meant jelly packets. Yeah, that was pretty funny, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that was an interesting moment for both she meant mother and bowls I. of <laughs> jelly. Yeah. Doesn't your grandmother keep bowls of jelly in the yeah. cupboard? Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd, Man, I don't I really want some jelly now. now. I always want jelly. But I... Jello for our American listeners. I was positive that Nana didn't keep Vegemite in her cupboard. She's got one cupboard. Yeah. And I was positive there wasn't any Vegemite in it. Dad thinks that Nana keeps it in the fridge. Right. I think... That Nana keeps it in the fridge. Okay. Now, everyone's probably listening going, well, there you go. We've cracked the secret. Da Vinci Code unlocked. That would all be well and good. Mm-hmm. I've never lived with my Nana. Yeah. One does have to wonder and I don't, why you started doing I that. don't often sit at home and go, ah, I'm doing this now because Nana does it. I don't wear a visor when I'm watching TV because the light's too bright because Nana does it. God bless I that woman. I what an <laughs> excellent reason to wear a visor. That's what visors were invented for, that exact I, reason. The reason I always love that is that she wouldn't turn the light off. No. <laughs> she didn't put no, a visor on. That would be ridiculous. And it wasn't even like a material visor. It was like plastic. Yeah, like oh, hard yeah, yeah, plastic. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, good old Nana. I, don't, I wonder if she still got that visor. Um, 
so the issue still remains is that even if Nana does keep her Vegemite in the fridge, that would at least yeah. be where I've been exposed to it from. Yeah. But why then? I'm still after... thinking about the Pfizer thing. Sorry, <laughs> it's so good. Anyway, sorry, continue. <laughs> she would put because Nana she'd have a she had a lamp next. She had, well, yeah. she has a lamp next to her chair. She has like a hanging <laughs> light that can be quite bright, and she'd be watching TV and yeah. she put a Pfizer on <laughs> <laughs> because of course. Yeah, and I was just used to that. Yeah, it's, um, it's quite funny. Sorry, continue yeah. with your story. Sometimes though, sorry, I'll get. Get back to the Vegemite scene, but sometimes don't use it in the lounge room, and you don't want to be in the dark. But then you turn the light, and you're like, it is a bit bright, and a visor would stop this. Yeah, I guess so. I've had it before. I don't know if I've ever thought specifically of especially visor. in fluoros when you're sitting in fluoros and you're like, I yeah. don't want to be in the dark. Mm. Anyway, so that doesn't explain it. Mm. The current theory is that number one, I was exposed to it that way. Number two, Elise thinks that at one point in her and I living with each other, one of us accidentally put the Vegemite in the fridge mm. and then the other one just kept doing it just went with it and now we're here and now you've, you've been playing fast and loose this game of of Vegemite in the fridge for so long you just, that's where you're at now I, and, I, and as I've said I'm not changing my ways and I do have to I actually have to retract one person agreed with me okay one person who uh, a friend of mine Veronica right um, who grew up on the Northern Beaches so it could be a Northern Beaches thing um, she said she keeps it in the fridge. I don't get it. I no. have one kindred okay. spirit in this world. Fair enough, Veronica. You do you, but you you're wrong. You. So so anyway, um, that's that was a bit of that was a tale. A yeah, tale I've told. Wow. It involved ups, downs, visors. It had everything yeah. really. Yeah. A story without a visor is like a mule with a spinning wheel. Do you want that's to know, a Simpsons quote? Do you, to, <laughs> do you want to know the best part of um, Nana's TV watching? What's that? So Nana's got this huge, like old TV set, like one of the ones there, like the TV's yeah, yeah, built yeah. into like the wooden thing. Ah, um, amazing! It's really nice to look at. But she's got a little TV on top of that, and that's the one that she watches. <laughs> yeah. There's a smaller Perfect. TV. I was going to say, on top of can the she TV. actually watch anything on that TV? Because no, that, that TV doesn't work. Digital, it's, just yeah. a, it's just a centerpiece. Um, but there is a TV on her TV. Perfect. Um, so yeah, and a visor on her head. Get your <laughs> visor. Get your TV. We Turn- should start selling TV visors. A Yegaday visor, I would be kind of into. A Yegaday round the house visor. It's, it's not an outside visor. Because it's so it bad, it's good. Yeah. What we were, oh, when we were watching uh, Too Fast, Too Furious the other day, and the guy was wearing like a backwards upside down visor, and oh, I was like, yeah. now there's a style. <laughs> Man, that movie was just terrible. <laughs> did, you, did you have a visor? Did I, I have a yeah, visor? I had a no, visor. no. Nikki had a visor. I definitely remember Nikki having a visor. Gabby, maybe. I didn't do the visor thing. I had no. I was a cap boy. What about when you worked at Subway? No, I didn't wear a visor. Oh, so I, I went f- free out, ball. Free. <laughs> oh no, I had a cap as well. I did wear a cap. Yeah, I um I had a visor when we used to go do um surf. What do we? I think we just called it surf. Just surf. I think so. Not surfing. Not not surf life saving. We, well, we, we were doing surf life saving at the beach in like year six or something, and yeah. I had a, a visor. I think it was Quicksilver. Watch out. Mm. Um, but yeah, then when I worked at Subway, I also had to wear a visor. Yeah. Um, visors aren't flattering. No. But I'm really, really into this idea right now of a Yegaday visor. It'd be cool. Let us know if you want a Yegaday visor because we can make it happen. We could do that. I don't yeah. know about material. I'm feeling the plastic to it's be true to Nana. Be gross plastic, yeah. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> and then you can listen to Yegaday in bright light whilst yeah. wearing a visor. Yeah. You never have to worry about bright light again. I'm looking at the light above you right now and I'm going, maybe that light is it too is bright. It is bright in here. I have noticed that since we've started talking about it. I need it, a actually. visor. Yeah. Damn it, it's so it's bright in bright. here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks, Nana. Always providing some uh, some joy and yeah. possibly answers to why my Vegemite's in the fridge. Yeah. I think Nana keeps coffee in the fridge too. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. Back in their day, they didn't have fridges. So they're just, just, just pretty excited they've got one. <laughs> yeah. Put the car in the fridge. <laughs> nah. Hot soup in the fridge. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so yeah. Uh, that's the tale. And Kylie uh, messaged me this morning. Mm. And she'd listen because she was trying to help me. Yeah. Um, and she listened to the episode and she's like, I'm so sorry I've let you down. I was like, you were literally my hope. Yeah. And then she's like, why don't you ask Niels? And I'm like, in what world would I ever follow anything Niels did? <laughs> yeah. Niels being the youngest of our housemates who just drank liters of milk every day. Yeah. I don't know why I'd follow him. And stored outrageous amounts of porridge downstairs for some reason. And then... Oh, it's not porridge. Kyler was like, what about Renee? He used to keep his butter on the um, on the bench. And I'm like, then why would he keep his Vegemite on the fridge? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Where's the logical jump there, Kylie? <laughs> Think about it. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, we should have just set aside the episode for Vegemite Talk. Yeah. Um, well, good. We, we talked about Fanny. We talked about Harold. And yeah. we talked about Vegemite. I'm very, very tempted for visors. Um, two questions to our audience, um, all tens of you. Mm. Um, number one. Do you want a year get a visor? Mm. Number two, do you know anyone that makes personalized visors? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do, do you know anyone in the visor game? <laughs> we need a hookup in the visor game. I want, I want to get in at the ground level of the visor game. <laughs> yeah. What kind of investment are we looking at in a, a making a big mark in the in the visor game? I'm looking to go to Shark Tank. Yeah. With the visor game. Yeah. Well, let's um, give them $200,000 for a 5% <laughs> stake in our visor company. Their visors. Oh, I've got no interest in visors, say the sharks. Yeah. Uh, they're plastic visors. That's it. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they fight and they fight. Anyway, good <laughs> stuff. We've had some fun. <laughs> our main customer base is elderly women who think it's just a bit too bright in here. <laughs> You see, the thing is, even if even if you bought a dimmer yeah. or something, they would still wear the visor. You've it's got perfect. to wear. Yeah. It's hard to focus on your knitting. Yeah. If you're distracted by a bright light. It's true. It's true. How are you going to knit your squares? Well done, Nana. Good on you, Nana. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't write me out of the will, please. Um, <laughs> I'll get you a visor. You might get the visor. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! I get the panola. Um. Good as always. Mm. Uh, thanks to Smelly Belly Water Girly Taylor Smell for our wonderful cover art, and to Curtis Fern Tree Music Fernance. I actually do recall seeing Curtis wearing a visor at least once. He strikes me as a man. He's the kind of boy that could wear a visor. He'd, have a visor. Um, he'd pull it off. Yeah, he he looks good in a visor. So get across, look at his stuff. He does the introduction, the introduction, and other music How for us. Music, so yeah. bloody good on him. Thanks. Um, make sure you check out our Patreon. As we said, the rewards change. Tim and I are about to record the bonus episode for oh. this month. Everyone's oh. loving it. It's Rave reviews are coming in from around the world. Time Magazine I think said, we just figured out our subject as well. We didn't have a subject before, but I think we might be doing it on visors. I was literally thinking yeah. that. Visors an Australian invention? Probably not. No. Um, and uh, yeah, people around... Time Magazine has uh, said Jaeger Day... Um, please stop emailing us and asking us to review. Yeah. So that was a pretty big uh, yeah. compliment from them. It was nice of them to write back because yeah. they, didn't, they didn't have to go to all that length and they to didn't be have to, so abrupt with us. I was going to say, yeah. they didn't have to use that colourful language that yeah. they use, but it was... They could was, have given us just a stock standard response, but no, they told us to go fuck ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and stop emailing yeah. Um But yeah, so check out the Patreon. Uh, $1 and $5 is all it costs you to get a lot of stuff. And Tim and changed. I... We'll be sending out postcards soon. A lot of our postcards have arrived yeah. for our original supporters who waited um, <laughs> a time. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that's about it. Follow us on social media at Yagaday Podcast. Um, share us with your friends and, um, you know, just wear a visor. As yeah. always, yeah, g'day, Tim. Yeah, g'day, Leon. Yeah, g'day, everyone. Yeah, g'day, everyone. Catch you on the flippity flop. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.